Hello, everyone. My name is Victor Ramsey, proud member of the Board of Directors of Shape America. I am very happy today to bring you two amazing higher ed educators who are going to contribute to our love for the love of health and physical education or love for HPE Week. They are going to share with us their initiative uh, that they covered or they did this past summer. So rather than me introducing them, I'm going to allow them to introduce themselves and to share with us how they arrived at uh, planning and implementing the uh, social justice camp that included disciplines across the board, science being one of them, art education, and yes, physical education. So without any further ado, I'm going to ask Dr. Leslie Kyler, who is the Chair of the Education Department at York College, City University of New York. Dr. Kyla, thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for inviting me, and I'm thrilled to share this initiative with you. Um, it grows out of our department at York College's deep commitment to social justice and preparing our candidates to teach for social justice wherever they are. Um, I, as the chair of the department, led the writing of a grant proposal to New York State Department of Education for the My Brother's Keeper Teacher Opportunity Court grants. And we were awarded a grant to support creating a social justice teaching core at York. And so there are many different components to that. Awesome. Um, one of them is the, um, the social justice summer camp. And one of the best things that I did in leading this project was to hire Professor Lockhart to be our summer director. So I will let her introduce herself. That is awesome. Thank you, Professor Lockhart. Thank you, Dr. Kyler. Thank you, Dr. Ramsey. Yes, I am Professor Lisa Lockhart. I um, for York, I teach math, education math courses, and I teach foundational math courses as well, as well as um, student teacher supervising and other things, writing grants and what have you. I got to say that for all of the things that I do for York, this is probably my favorite. Um, it was Leslie's baby but she allows me to keep it on the weekends. So I feel like it's kind of like my baby too. Sure. And um, I've always been a humongous advocate for social justice. My day job is I am an elementary teacher in a, um, you know, a lower income district. So it's always been my passion. It's always been you know, important to me that my students get the same opportunities that their more affluent counterparts get. One of the things that um, I did in my district was to make sure that, you know, one-to-one -one devices were, number one, a thing that we can do. I worked, of course, not by myself with the technology team, but I made sure that my class received them and, um, and you know, worked through, like, troubleshooting, whatever situations may come up. And when the pandemic came, it was excellent because our students were able to go ahead and move into a new dynamic that they were not used to or privy to before. Right. Whereas in other districts, this was something that they were doing online learning. So bringing that to York, my passion is if I can show other teachers how to be passionate about social justice and they go into other schools, now we are spreading the word. Now we're spreading the cause and hopefully it won't be a cause anymore. It'll be just a thing that is. Absolutely love that. Yes. And uh, not only did you do it for teachers, but obviously future professionals or future teachers, which is something that I was quite impressed. And one would think that this initiative was a pilot, but it's it, the way you presented it, it sounded like you were, it looked like you already 
we're doing this for some time. So I have to commend you on, on an amazing job, a remarkable job that you did with that. So I want to pose a, a, a few questions and uh, please feel free. You can um, bounce back uh, your responses among yourself. Uh, so with regards to the Summer Justice Initiative, what were you hoping to achieve with this initiative in particular as you were trying to navigate what disciplines to pull in or what what to present to, to, the, to the participants of this camp? So we had a group of um, our pre-service teachers who were social justice teaching core members, and they had been having experiences in their classes and in field work, developing their understanding and skills. But with the summer camp, we saw an opportunity for them to get um, deep mentoring by um, current teachers who were committed to social justice in their individual subject areas and to see how to translate the concepts of social justice that they've learned a lot across classes into their specific disciplines. Because sometimes I hear students in math saying, you know, I can't do that because it's just numbers or students in physical education saying, well, it's, you know, it's all about bouncing the ball and can you bounce the ball? Nice. So, so it's about who your students are, understanding where they come from, helping them to have the dreams they should have and seeing that they can fulfill those dreams. So we wanted to get, we thought that in a summer camp where we didn't have to meet anyone's external criteria, we could open up the creativity of all of these professionals. And so we were preparing our candidates to think big about what they could do with social justice and giving students in the community the opportunity to have a really positive learning experience and see what college was and interact with some college students, which in and of itself was a social justice project. That is awesome. You wanna add anything, Professor Lockhart? I don't really think I could. I think that was everything, um, especially talking about the, the students who actually participated in the summer camp. Um, it was, as as Dr. Kyla said, it was it was important for them to be a part of the program, but even them interacting with the, the York students, it gave them a vision of their possible future. Like you can you can be here too. It is Absolutely. not as hard as or as un you know imaginable as you might think it is. Um, and I, you know the the. I, I think, and I might be jumping ahead on the questions, but I think the big, biggest testament to the summer camp was that every, they kept coming back every day. That is awesome. That's what they, we want. <laughs> they kept coming yes. back every day. And yes. in our evaluation, the consistent critique was they wanted it to be longer. Longer. Yeah. I, I can only imagine. Yeah. So, I, so that yes, so yes. we felt good about the the experience that they were that having awesome. and. And, and building on what Professor Lockhart said, they these um, K to eight or third through eighth grade students yeah. were working with our pre-service teachers who had been them, who came from the very same communities, who looked just like them, who spoke the same languages they did. That is wow. so, and. And our pre-service teachers were seeing what those kids could do when given the opportunity to shine. That's beautiful because then they take, they take that now to their uh, future planning and implementation and facilitation of instruction. That is awesome. So besides the logistics, and this sounds like you had a lot, you put a lot together. Obviously you did because I... Uh, was was there to see and, and hear and con contribute a little bit about what I had. Um, what uh, in, in just maybe a sentence or two, um, what what steps along the way uh, you noticed to be were challenging in the process? Was anything initially a challenge when you first started it? Or plan it or start to plan it? This was the first summer we were doing this. So ah. recruiting the 
third through eighth grade students to participate in something that was brand new right. um, took a lot of work. I think we're going to be oversubscribed next year because I they all sure. want to bring their friends. They right. want to come back and they want to bring their friends. But, um, but the, the first year of a new program when parents don't know whether it's going to be worth their kids' time was, I think, probably one of our biggest hurdles. That's awesome. So what I'm hearing is that you sold it to them. They love it. Uh, the feedback was positive, and that's great. So you are going to need more space to accommodate the entire community. Okay. Yes. So I want, to ask, I want to ask you the next question that's near and dear to my heart. And uh, obviously, uh, you had to come up with what subjects do we bring into this camp? How and why did you decide to include physical education as part of this social justice camp? Why you thought that was important? What? How did you arrive at this? So the... Part, part of our belief as a department is that um, that school systems, when they are worried about, so worried about testing, don't focus on the full and long-term development of the child. Right. And yeah. if we're really thinking about social justice, we're thinking about lifelong well-being. And so we wanted to, to really think about how, um, how do we prepare these pre-service teachers to think about maximizing their impact on the lifetime trajectory of these children and it is too easy to see, well, you know, we don't have the fancy gym. We don't have the fancy equipment. We don't, you know, um, you know, I only have this amount of time. I've got this many kids in my classroom. And we wanted to help our pre-service teachers see that, um, that they could motivate students in creative ways, that they could, um, use the resources in their communities that they could build on the kids passions to connect with them because what you know one of the things that we um that we hear from our pe students is that um by the time kids are in high school they're not wanting to participate so that's much. correct the research shows us that that's correct yes but, so helping our students build the skills of how do you make physical education something that is so deeply connected to who these kids are that they want to run into your classroom every day. Wow. Thank you so much for putting that so eloquently. So the outcomes of the success of this initiative, initiative uh, given the feedback that you receive, given the fact that you are educating the child beyond the the school settings, because we talk about communities. Um, do you think that this, uh, the strategy, uh, the, the the outcome of this initiative could serve as a motivating tool to recruit high school students who are contemplating to become physical educators? Do you think this could be used as a as a as a recruitment tool, or could it could it use as a, a strategy to motivate them? And uh, on, that, on that same line, uh, do you think physical education? Uh, future professionals that participated, do you think that that helped to motivate them that, to now say, you know what, we need to have more of this in more physical education in programs like these to, to collaborate, to bring about um, successes uh, as, you, as, as we move forward? So essentially, can it be used to recruit high school students? Because as a member of the uh, recruitment and retention task force here at Shape America, that's something that we want to start building the motivational um, um, uh, um, fire, for lack of a better term, to get our, our, our future, um, our high school students to consider that, to teach, to, to, to want to learn about physical education and teach physical education. 
I, I'm going to have to say absolutely to that. Um, when you look at the total package, you're looking at K to eight, sorry, three to grades three to eight students interacting with college students, and three to eight. That's the those are the years that you go from wanting to be a fireman, a policeman, you know, a basketball player, and then you start to kind of you know reality starts to kick in, and you realize that those dreams, while are def while they're definitely attainable, are you know big long-term goals yes um interacting with these pre-service teachers and seeing you know i mean to me they're still kids but they're adults like who look like them not too far off in age as them and enjoying what they're doing that opens the eye to the kid who does love physical education, but never realized that they could make a career out of it. Because, you know, when they see us, they don't really see us as a career path. Uh -huh. They see us as a, as a person that has to do a job, but they don't realize they can do this job as well. So it opens their eyes to that. The phys ed section also opened their eyes to sports they might not have ever tried. And now that they've tried it, now they're gonna go into their schools and maybe they'll try out for those teams. Um, as far as the pre-service teachers, I definitely think it motivated them a lot because they were getting these students who were coming in daily, uh, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, no complaining, um, excited, ready to do anything. And 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 if you know if anybody had to be pulled to the side, they got themselves together quickly because they wanted to get back into the fun. So it shows the pre-service teachers that what they do is worthwhile. Excellent. And um, and it goes further than just making sure a student is physically fit. It actually goes into mentally as well. Awesome. So I and absolutely think it's a great recruiting tool. Awesome. And part of our program plan is to have high school interns working in our summer camp. We With just getting things started this summer, oh. we did not have that piece in place this first year. That is amazing. But Yes. But you know, and so we are we are working on identifying a funding source because we'd like to give those high school students a stipend for the time that they're with us, but to get let them get to see what the pre-service teacher college candidates are doing as they prepare to be physical educators, I I think would be a big recruiting tool. That is awesome. So as we uh, get ready to culminate this uh, wonderful uh, time together, uh, the, the, what advice would you or suggestions would you offer to other instit uh, institutions of higher education who would like to pilot or begin implementing something similar to what you have done? What advice would you give them should you have to share uh, information with them? What advice would you give them? Um, from my end as a director, which was this was my first time ever directing something to this magnitude, um, the advice from my end is come in with every expectation ah. and and um, and make it happen. Um, we had high expectations our first go around. One thing I love about Dr. Kyler and um, and my personality is that we we go for the high bar. <laughs> You know, we swing for the high bar, and if we don't hit that high bar, you know, we come as close to it as possible, and the next goal is the high bar. So we came in with high goals. We came in wanting numbers, you know, specific numbers, and we got, I think we got, like, the first set of numbers that we wanted. We came in wanting certain things to be implemented, um, and those things happen. So um, don't be afraid of any expectations. And, and um, you know, no, 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 no ask is too big. Mm -hmm. I, and the big, and I have to do this because I'm not sure if I did it, but I have to commend the pre-service teachers because their passion was amazing. And, you know, in anything that we do, in all, in all realms of education, when you walk into that classroom or that lecture hall, your face sets the tone for the entire lecture, for the entire class. And so when when these three to eight students are coming in and they're seeing these college students happy, excited to see them and ready to go for the day, 
you have no choice but to get infected by that. So um, my advice for anybody wanting to pilot, number one, do it. Number two, make sure you have a passionate team with you. And number three, set those goals high because you will reach them. Excellent. So um, I would I, only I, add to that. Um, you know, at, ask people for help. Everybody that we said we're doing this project and uh -huh. we need chipped yeah. in made it happen you know love it that came, came up with resources so so don't feel like you have to do it on your own if you're doing something that is good for kids that is good for pre-service teachers that's good for the community people are going to want to help you so do that the second thing is be meticulous about record keeping because everybody asks you afterwards, what did you do? How did you do it? That's, Very that's true. advice. And not only that, but for future funding, if you mm -hmm. can show the, uh, the, the, the data, the data, whether qualitatively or quantitatively, you can make the case for getting more funding. So um, could you give me, before you leave, uh, maybe one or two examples of how did you implement, um, how did you... Um, supplement or or intertwine the, the 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 various disciplines that you brought up brought on board for this social justice camp uh one particular example that you might have remembered that the physical education future professionals did that you may recall that tied into the art and or the uh, science um what one one thing that the physical education um strand did that I think really just fit in with everything, including life, was they really talked about and demonstrated the importance of team, the importance of being a team, playing as a team, working as a team. Like that was really the overarching theme for, for them, which is transferable to life. Um, and so therefore it was able to be transferred over to any of the other disciplines. It's so important that we learn be especially, you know, post pandemic where mm -hmm. team wasn't really a word that we use except for if we were using Microsoft Teams to meet. Um, so it's so important to bring those ideals back into our education system because our students, some of them, you know, especially the fourth grade students who started school in kindergarten and in March, they were home. So they really don't have a good concept of what it is to be in school, what it is to work with people toward a common goal. And so you see a lot of working against. So the phys ed department really put a high concentration on teamwork, which was beautiful to me because it's a life skill that even if no matter where you work, even if you work by yourself, you are with some sort of team and you have to always be considerate of that. Right. You know, what's ironic. I tell my students uh, when you talk about team, no matter where you are, I said to them, unless you plan to be a solo astronaut, you still need someone in, 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 in on Earth to bring you back. So you have to. Exactly. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting that you brought that up. So mm -hmm. um, I just can't uh, thank you enough. I know that uh, one of the uh, projects that I can remember was they did uh, sort of like a, a, a board that, that had a various elements of of, of team building and I believe they, they use uh, social justice in, in sports and athletics and the Olympics. And yes. uh, we talk about those elements in our society. And as we know, we need, our children are looking and listening to us. So we have to model positive behaviors. And I cannot begin to tell you that that project in particular, I believe uh, wrapped up that summer camp in a very positive and uplifting manner. So I heard, a lot of great information here that I hope that our listeners will take heed to, uh, especially institutions of higher education who plan to model or uh, take on uh, initiatives similar to this one. And uh, we look forward to any future collaboration. If, if hopefully we could take this nationally and, so, <laughs> and uh, connect with other institutions who I believe will benefit from that. And I want to thank you in particular for bringing in um, our future professionals, future uh, educators 
in the physical education uh, domain because this is something that oftentimes you have uh, department chairs who may not have had that passion to say, I need to bring in physical education because this is part of building the holistic child. So on behalf of Shape America and the uh, Recruitment and Retention Task Force, thank you both for joining us. Thank you for sharing all that you have done. And uh, we look forward to future um, collaborations with you somehow and to hearing from this year's uh, summer camp in particular about the recruiting of high school. We'd love to see how that will go. So thank you once again, and uh, I talk to you then. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Ramsey. My pleasure.